Actor, Marco Zapatich. Action guard, Roman, number 31. At the other guard position, Linda Rice. At power forward, Slater. At the other forward position, Kavali Kavango. Yes, sir. Happy New Year. It's your boy, Reg Dollar. Welcome back to week three of the Golded Fictional League. We got a matchup between two undefeated teams, 3-0, and the Virginia Beach Neptunes taking on the Pittsburgh Force. But before we get into that game, we got to take a look at the shot heard around the world on Halloween by Russell Marshall taking on the New Jersey Glory, stepping back right over top of TJ Russell, and he calls game. Russell Marshall making it look easy. Of course, they got to go to the official review and make sure it's right. But if it is, that caps off a 33-point game against the New Jersey Glory. Look at that. Again, that shot off in time. Big-time shot maker. Big-time closer. One of the best in the game. But let's get back to it. Game one, week three. Two undefeated teams about to go to battle. And we're about to see a matchup of the beast, the monster, Freak Zella himself, Rich mother effing mac it's time of course they control the tip the pittsburgh force has the ball and it's handled by the point guard out of kentucky trevor wilkins getting the hop step to go and getting the floater to get in on the other side Kayvon cabango is is the guy for this roster but rich mac comes from the help side and denies that now he gets in the high post finds a wide open dominique odom for the open trade ball in the corner hall of fame catch and shoot that'll do it to you now Rich Mack with the drop step away from the double team and gets the layup to go. And on the next possession, London Price trying to get downhill, but gets the shot swatted by Rich Mack. You better come correct when you come down there, Rich Mack. Now Kayvon Cabongo knocks down the three, and Virginia Beach on a little run. Now a nasty crossover, step back, getting a separation against Chase Cassidy, knocking down a mid-range shot. This is why he's a go-to guy on this team, but Dominique Odom. He could spray it from downtown, this time creating his own. Nah, did y'all see that screen by Rich Mack? Brother might be in concussion protocols real soon. Uh-uh. Got laid the hell out on that one. And now this time, it looks like Jelani Austin. Come on. Come on, dog. Eight foot plus wingspan, and you coming in with that weak stuff. Rich Mack on the offensive glass. Just moves the defender out the way and gets a, just a slight one-hand jam. Just chilling on the rims this time. I feel you, Rich. And now he gets it. Oh, he's looking to take it coast to coast. Somebody can stop the ball. Swings it to one of his teammates. And they lob it right back up to him. And he does a pull up on the rim this time. Letting it be known. And now Trevor Wilkins getting a floater to go over two defenders. Pittsburgh Force is up by eight. Step back. Trevor Wilkins drills it from downtown to give them a double digit lead. Now Richie Sanders finds a wide open London Price out of San Diego State. He was a hooper out there, averaged like 22 a game. But Rich Mack hitting pull-up jumpers is over. <laughs> it's over. The league is finished if Rich Mack is hitting pull-up jumpers. Like, what? And now this time, they draw two to Rich Mack, and they get a wide-open shot for Kurt Demir. And Terrence Young knocks down the three. Kayvon Cabongo with 11 in the game, stepping back around the free throw line, creating separation, and he gets it to go. 13 is he starting to heat up. They getting smacked, though. They need something. And they get that something by Jelani Austin with the acrobatic shot. And now Rich Mack again with another jumper over two defenders. What is going on here? And now Jameer Slater gets right past Rich Mack. He might have slipped on a banana peel or something. Gets the layup to go. He's been quiet all game. Quiet all game. And Rich Mack, how do, like, what's going on, bro? The floor is slippery or something, dog? 
but a, a man's rebound by Marco Savic. I know he he having himself a tough game right now. And Jameer, oh my God, <laughs> I thought he was about to lay that. Yeah, I thought he was about to lay that. Rich Mac don't play. Sent that thing to like the fourth row. Oh my goodness. Like I said, eight foot plus wingspan. He tried it. Dan Shore tried it. Rebound by Marco Savic. Passes Jameer Slater, and this time he dunks it on the defender. Lucky Rich Mac was not down there. But slams it right over the top of Alonzo Montana. Now ball in the hands of Trevor Wilkins, and he lobs it up to Rich Mack, and he does another pull-up on the rim. Timeout call, Virginia Beach. This time, London Price drives to the basket and gets a left-handed layup to go. And now, in transition, he passes it to the corner. Bad spacing right here. London Price lets it fly from downtown, though, and he gets it to go. And now Dominique Golden gets blocked on his jumper, but Rich Mack is there to clean it up. An absolute monster on the offensive glass. And now he out here doing dance moves, spins, goes baseline, and throws it down. Rich Mack is just doing what he want, wants in this game. Bringing it up court. And now Kayvon Cabongo knocks it down from three. Give him 21 in the game. Eight in the quarter. Let's see if he can keep getting, getting things going. And this guy is going to be crucial to the comeback. Jameer Slater. With Rich Mack out of the game, he has to keep attacking the basket. But Dominique Odom this time attacks the basket and gets the and one to go and is letting everybody know about it. Now Chase Cassidy has 11 in the game, gets a pick and roll, and lobs it up to Alonzo Montana, and he knows what to do with it. He's usually on, the on this receiving end, even though he got dunked on earlier, but it happens. Especially in this league, it's going to happen. But downtown, Trevor Wilkins knocks it down. The jumper is not really falling from this game. But Jameer Slater on the fast break gets past the defender and gets an and one to go. And he's letting everybody know about it. He is hyped. And can he make the free throw, though? Because you know people be dumb hyped like this and end up missing a free throw. But they find a wide open Jameer Slater again running the floor. Like I said, he was going to be crucial. He wasn't doing anything the first three quarters, but he's starting to get it going. Actually, let me put some respect on his thing. He started getting it going a little bit in the third quarter, but the player of the game right now is Rich Mack. Absolute force. It looks like he's just chilling right now. Like, he could just be dunking everything and trying to really, really rip him off the rim. But he's still a monster, and they find him in a post, drop step, and this is what he does. Throws it down right on the defender. 37 and 19 for Rich Mack. Fender had no chance of blocking that. He could just go places where other people can't. That's what it is. But a pull-up three this time by Caden Harris, and he knocks it down. It's a single-digit game. Terrence Young drives to the basket and goes right into the chest of Kayvon Cabongo. That's a tough finish right there. Over a 6'10", 6'11 guy going right into his chest, and he's wide open for three, and he knocks it down. 13 off the bench for Terrence Young. Now Chase Cassie gets the pick and roll with Rich Mack, and he does a one dribble pull up. That's that's a thing of beauty right there, a thing of beauty. And Dominique Oden misses it, but Rich Mack dunks it home. Give him 21 rebounds in the game, absolute force. Now Caden Harris trying to drive, and he passes Jameer Slater, and he dunks it home with a monster slam. Has 24 in the second half. Step back. Trevor Wilkins misses it. That's a grown man rebound, and Rich Mack puts it back in. 41 and 22. Letting everybody know I got this. Goes baseline and goes right into the chest of Kayvon Cabongo. 45 in a game. And now they go pick and roll. Trevor Wilkins lobs it up to Alonzo, put in the exclamation point on this game. Windmill off an of alley-oop in traffic. And that will do it. The Pittsburgh Force end up winning by double digits by 11 points after a monster performance by Rich Mack. And a fake comeback. You know, the, I'm a Lakers fan, so, you know, I, I see the fake comebacks from, from a mile away. They had no chance of really coming back with Rich Mack in this game. I'm going to be honest with you. I think the league just runs through Rich Mack. <laughs> like, I, I honestly don't know who's going to stop him. Like, I look through the league. There's not one person that can really guard him. Like, only way you could stop Rich Mack if you put him in foul trouble. 47 and 24 and six blocks. And bro was just playing. Bro took three jump shots. Made two of them in the mid-range and shot a three. Like, Rich Mack was really bold this game. 
And if the other guys are hitting shots, I don't know who's stopping this team. The league runs through Rich Mack, who is stopping him. On the other side, Jameer Slater was hooping in the second half. He had finished with 28 points. Kayvon Cabongo, uh, great defense by the Pittsburgh Force. Held on to an inefficient night. But on the other side, 26 in the second half for Jameer Slater. Rich Mack was just as dominant in the second half as well. I'm saying, bro. It runs through him, but we move. Moving on to the second prime time matchup of the week, we got the New York City Natives taking on the Chicago Union. New York City four and one, Chicago one and four. But we got Mo Davis in action. Maurice Davis, Mo Buckets, one of the best scorers that we got in the league today. And then on the other side, we got the four five duo of Mikel Terry and Mardo Ellington and one of the most shiftiest two guards in TJ Cyrus. Let's get to it though. Mo Davis starting to get right to it. Right to it, Mo. That's all he know. One thing about Mo Davis, he gonna get his game off. But an and one by TJ Cyrus right here. And let's take a look at the power rankings. We only like three games into the season, but it don't really matter about the top. They got the Bronx Hustlers in that five. They got the Natives, but back to the action. Tyus Rogers steps back, great contest, but it doesn't matter with him. One of the best mid-range scorers that we got in the game. Loves to get to his spots, but a great pass right here. Great find by, by TJ Cyrus to Markel Terry. And now Tyus Rogers handling the ball. Gets a good screen by Chance Jackson and lets it go from downtown to tie the game up at seven apiece. Now he finds his teammate, Corey Washington. One of the best, one of the best smooth strokes in the game. Knocks it down from downtown. Mm, I saw no shooting splits Markel Terry, seven or 21. But Mo Davis getting right to it in transition. And this time off the screen, gets right to the mid-range and has seven early points. What is he in store this game? But a great hop step. That's great defense right there. But better offense is going to be better defense. And now Primo Parker coming off the bench, driving to the basket, and gets the and one to go. Primo Parker, national champion out of the Duke squad in year one of the Golden Fictional League. Or the Golden Fictional class. And I don't know what just happened on that last play, but Mo Davis doing some acrobats. Hold on now. Hang time in the air. Getting the layup to go. That's a tough one right there. And now he steps back with the shot clock winding down. He misses it, though, but it gets tipped and tipped back in by Braylon Stone. And now they find a wide open man in the corner, and that is Amari Thompson. Quick trigger. And Mario Ellison's been struggling the first couple of games, and he finally gets his first two points on the board with a tough spin move off. The, oh, my. Oh, that's a dime. That is a dime. Ties Rogers to Carlito Cruz right there, and Amari Thompson gets, gets it back with another three. 34-32. The Natives are up by two, and that's just a grown man right there. Markel Terry just goes right at the defender and lays it in. And like I said, one of the smooth strokes in the game, Corey Washington. And Mo Davis comes off the screen, defender right in his face, and he just pulls it. Timeout call. The Natives are up by two, and he jumps the passing lane right there. Amari Miles and dunks it home with a nasty slam. AT&T 5G slam cam and getting up on that one. Great anticipation to play that passing lane and get that steal. And now TJ Cyrus handling the ball. 
Oh my god. I'm, I'm telling you, he got the rope. He got the rope. Step back and he knocks it down. Y'all thought I was playing. Y'all thought I was playing. That's a break right there. But a grown man rebound by Braylon Stone. I don't know what that celebration is. Bad celebrations. But Corey Washington found wide open again and he knocks it down. And now Tyus Rogers in the post. Throws another dime to Corey Washington wide open and he sprays it home. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This, the smooth, One of the smoothest strokes that in the game. And another one. Two defenders going at him and he is hot. Scorched. And TJ Cyrus said, let me get in on the, on the three-point shooting party. Knocks it home, but they still down by six. TJ Cyrus on the fast break finds a wide open Amari Miles, and he gets in on the three-point party. 8-0 run by the Union, but they still find themselves down. And Tyus Rogers stops and pops for three. Timeout call. Now Markel Terry going to work, going right into the defender's chest and turning around to get him, give himself a double-double. And a pull up by Amari Thompson. Knocks down the three. That's his third one of the game. Dream Lawson. They got so much players hitting threes right now. But they st they finally find themselves tied. And a pull up three by Amari Miles. And he knocks it down to get them the lead. Now Ty's Rogers lobs it up to Chance Jackson. Gives them his first two points of the game. They haven't looked at him all game. But they finally find him with this lob. Let's see if they could go into that. Tyus Rogers now manipulating out of pick and roll. Goes to stop and pop, but he finds Chance Jackson to give them the dunk, and the crowd is loving it. Tyus Rogers again calls for another screen. This time he does pull up out of that pick and roll, and he is putting on a show right now. Pick and roll maestro, and this time knocks down the three. Tyus Rogers up to 17 and 9. He is absolutely hooping. And they find Markel Terry. That's a tough finish right there. I thought it was about to get blocked. And Tyus Rogers gets the screen for three. And he is having himself a fourth quarter closing out this game right now. 22 and 9. The crowd is loving it. They're up by six. Getting double team. They find a wide open Corey Washington. And you know the results. All game, 18 threes. And oh my God. This is one of the most emphatic blocks that we've seen so far in this league. Punching it right to the rim. And now Mo Davis, shot clock winding down. Gets a nice little hezzy. Gets past the defenders and lays it in. And that is the dagger. The New York City natives end up going home with that W. Ties Rogers closing it out. Mo Davis having himself a big first half. But in the second half, he ain't get. I think that was his only bucket at the end. Will Davis had a quiet second half. Tyus Rogers ends up being the player of the game. He was putting on a show in that in that pick and roll. Got him with the lob. Got him with the pump fake. Yeah, he was about to shoot and pass it out. Pass it to the defender. I mean, to the to the roll man. Pulled up this time and then just hit like three threes. Like he was hooping. Twenty six and ten in the game for him. Mo Davis ended up like six to twenty one. Yeah, that was his only point. And those and like the last like 40 seconds of the game. And though that ended up being a big a big shot. Corey Washington was spraying it from deep. But Taj Rogers, 16 points in the fourth quarter. On the other side, Markel Terry had 12 in the fourth quarter. TJ Cyrus was two of eight. But six of twenty-one. Mo Davis. I was just caping for you, dog. I was hyping you up, saying you one of the best scores, and you do that? That's how you coming? And Mario Ellington was suspect as well. We see you, brother. You know what I mean? You want to see players be suspect. But we about to move on to the next game. Moving on to the final game. We got the Columbus Capitals, 1-5. Mm. Taking on the 3-2 Long Beach Dreamers. Got one of the best logos. And that's Aaron Booth right there. Shot creator at the two-guard spot. And the shooting guard spot might be the deepest the deepest position in the league. Full of going get you one, guys. You got Reggie Mack, Marquise Allen, Mo Davis, Dwayne Cooper. Just a few off the top of the dome. But it's time to get into this. Nah, this is disrespectful. They gave them a F home court advantage. That's disrespectful. Let's see if they can get that dub. We got to get that up to a D minus or something. But Aaron Booth handling the ball to start off the game. Oh, he over here. Okay, trying to show off his Jans moves. But finds a wide open Boogie Ellis. Boogie Evans. Not Boogie Ellis. Come on, bro. 
Boogie Evans that gets the dunk to I mean, the three to go. I'm all over the place. Dario Dajakovic gets the dunk. Five to two for Columbus. Then Dario gets blown past by Devontae Tucker. But I'll give him a pass. Devontae Tucker like that athleticism wise. But Deron Frazier. That's a tough, crafty finish right there. Again, passes defender, putting on a dance move. He said, hold on now. I got the big clear out. But it was too much people in his way. But it didn't matter on that play. 11 to 4. They find it wide open corner. Caleb Taylor to drill that three. California kid through and through. And this time, doesn't get the, the steal out of the post. And Deion Jones throws it down. Aaron Booth gets the screen and pulls up from downtown. I'm telling you, this the shooting guard class is full of uh, brothers that could go and get you one. And speak about going and get you one, De'Ron Frazier creates his own offense and throws it down right over the top of Aaron Kelly to get the 5G slam can. Damn. He got some handles from that, like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, with some really good athleticism. Like, you see that crossover right there, gets to the basket and lays it home. Six points in the, in the game for him. And now... With Deion Jones defending him, goes behind the back to the basket and gets another layup to go. He is living at the rim to start off the game, all eight of his points in the paint. And now a lob to Devontae Tucker. When I think of Devontae Tucker, I just think of what Jabari Parker was supposed to be. And as a Duke fan, that hurts my heart that Jabari Parker ended up suffering so much injuries in his career. But Deron Frazier showing that he can knock it down from downtown. Somebody got, got to guard him at some point. And that finger roll by Boogie Evans, that thing almost got swatted to the rafters. But Aaron Booth, wide open in the corner, and they're up 46. Well, now 48 to 32. Nasty crossover by Devontae Tucker and gets the pull up to go. 14 in the game for him. Now pick and roll. They swing it to the wide open. I don't remember what that brother name is. I think it might be my Braden Castleton. Yes, that is Braden Castleton. And a pull-up three out of the pick and roll by Aaron Booth, and he knocks it down. And now again, gets another screen. Goes behind the back, steps back in the mid-range, and he is putting on a clinic, a getting buckets right now. Now hop step by Devontae Tucker, going right back at it, trying to keep his team alive. 18 in the game for him. Dario Dajakovic finds Boogie Evans. They swing it to Brandon Rowe. Great offense and a wide open three by Aaron Booth. And now Cameron Ramirez with the ball who has been quiet. A nice step back. Crane separation again is a goal in the mid range. And now a fast break. Caleb Taylor lobs it up and Cameron Ramirez out of nowhere throws it down right on the back of Dario Dajakovic. I didn't even know who that lob was going to at first. And now Devontae Tucker gets past the defender with the floater to go, trying to get some little bit of momentum in the game. Gets right past Dario Dajakovic. They might got to switch that because he got no type of lateral quickness to be guarding someone like Devontae Tucker. And now Cameron Maris gets the layup to go. Tough finish right there with the, op with the opposite hand. And now Dario Dajakovic knocks down the three. Big time shot right there to give them the 17 point advantage. Devontae Tucker comes off the screen and throws it down. At the five, they got a 6'9", Sean Foster, so he not really a rim protector like that. They run protection comes from Dario Dajakovic, but Sean Foster just a bigger body to guard the fives. And a three ball by Devontae Tucker. He's having himself a day, but they need this guy off the bench to get going. Mike Bentley could fill it up. Reminds me of Fred Van Fleet. He like six, six foot, shoots a lot of threes, don't get to the basket at all. But Devontae Tucker, he does it at all three levels. Absolute will in this team right now to come back. They're down by four, and they're trying to turn defense into offense. They lob it up, and Wendell Richardson throws it down. It's a two-point game. Yeah, I think I know. I think I know why Columbus is one and five right now because they are absolutely blowing it. They smoking it right now. Smoking a product by Aaron Aaron Booth trying to weather the storm. Saying relax, I got this. With a step back out of the post. And now he finds a wide open corner man, Brandon Rowe. They swing it, but a quick release by Braden Castleton, and he knocks it down. And now they swing it around the perimeter, and Braden lets it fly again, and he is feeling it. Quick triggers on both of it, both his last two shots, and now it's stolen away. Great defense right there, and it's showtime. Jordan Keenan throws it down and gets the AT&T 5G slam cam. Now, you see how he cocked it back, though. 
And now they swing it, and Braden Castleton lets it fly again for his fourth three of the game, third in, in the second half. And Mike, Mike Bentley pulls up and takes the lead for the loss. The Long Beach Dreamers, I was about to say Los Angeles. So much California teams. And step back out of the pick and roll. Aaron Booth knocks it down. 25 points, no boards, and six assists. Now he drives to the basket and finds a wide open Declan Finley. The kid from Ireland knocks it down. Crossover, Aaron Booth driving to the basket and gets the lay to go. Damn, what the, what's big man? Like, what's his use? He ain't blocking no type of shots over here again. Laid all game. And now they find Caleb Taylor to knock down the three to take the lead back. He has 17 and 19 and 9 in the quarter. Now Aaron Booth swings it. Shot clock winding down. Boogie with the step back. Crossover. Step back. Oh, my God. Get Boogie with it. Get Boogie with it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Boogie Evans going to work. And Deron, Deron Frazier with the ball in his hands. Swings it to Boogie. Shot clock winding down again. Boogie, you got to do something. Puts a little bit and moves on and pulls up for three, and that is the dagger. Get him out of here. Boogie Evans closes out the game, and the Colorado, Columbus, wherever the hell they from. Where is Columbus at? Oh, it's probably Columbus, Ohio. The Columbus Capitals ends up getting the dub. Devontae Tucker, he looks sick. He was hooping. Aaron Booth, though, the player of the game, he was getting buckets. Old Davis might need to take notes. Might need to take notes. But, like, what I'm saying is, like, on the Long Beach Dreamers, like, they big man was not blocking no shots. No type of rim protection. 7-2 for what? 30 in a game for Boogie Evans. 27 and 8 for Aaron Booth. In the fourth quarter, Boogie took over. Only played six minutes, but didn't miss a shot, though. And shout out to Brayden Castleton. Hit three threes in that fourth quarter. As Long Beach gave them a fight. And even took the lead at one point. It was getting smacked for like most of the game. But that would do it for week three of the Goaded Fictional League. It's your boy Res Dollar, man. Leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Also, hit the subscribe button. It's 2023. Feel me? We trying to grow this channel even more. So help a brother out. And as always, stay safe, be goaded, and I'll see y'all in the next one.